Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And let's continue and move forward with our graph data structure topic. In case if you've missed the previous video in this DSA course, in that video we took an introduction to graph data structure, so that was the very first video. This is like the continuation to that, so we'll understand few more properties and important terms in graph data structure. And these are absolutely important. So if you've missed the previous video, please make sure you watch that. because these videos are in proper series in this dsa course that is this dsa playlist if you've seen that then you're good to go let's understand some more important properties and terminologies before we head on with the implementation so you've already seen the definition of graph data structure in the previous video so quickly going through that graph consists of finite set of vertices and nodes which are connected via edges so basically graph is a non linear data structure consisting of nodes and edges this is something that we've already seen something that you've not seen in previous video is that we can also give a mathematical representation to the graph structure so a graph can be shown as a set of pair where v is the set of vertices and e is the set of edges which are connecting these pair of vertices okay so in this given example which you can see on the right hand side in this graph example the set of vertices are a b c d e f which are represented by v so this is something which happens in set theory right if you have mathematics as a subject i'm pretty sure you must be having set theory or graph theory so in that terminology this is how the notations are given and this is the set of edges so we have a to b right you can see we have a to b and this is a undirected graph so which means that we can traverse both ways so that's why there is only one single edge between the two i hope you know what is undirected and directed we've talked about that previously so we have a to c so we have a to c we have b d we have bd we have b to c which is this one so on and so forth now of course the reverse is also possible so we have e to b also but i'm not representing that over here right now but you get the idea right this is how mathematically also you can represent graphs so don't get confused if you get some mathematical notations like this this is nothing but the set of nodes and this is nothing but the set of edges okay all right so let's move forward and let's try to go through some important properties of graph data structure okay so on the left hand side we have quite a lot of data over here let's quickly go through them you guys can take a screenshot or if you are making notes you can note them down these are some graph terms and properties so let's talk about them quickly so that you don't get bored of the theory these are important terms so don't skip this okay just go through them once you can you know increase the speed if you are bored of listening to theory but you need to at least have heard about all these terms right adjacency path self loop etc etc so that later on when we use those terms in the actual implementation you don't get confused all right okay so let's talk about adjacency so two nodes or vertices are adjacent if they are connected to each other through an edge pretty basic makes sense so in the following example we have b is adjacent to c right we have b over here and c over here and it is connected by this edge so it's adjacent to c can you say b and f are adjacent no there is no direct edge between b and f right so this should be that edge but it is not there currently so hence b is not adjacent to f but b is adjacent to c makes sense let's move forward okay so the next term is path and path is nothing but a sequence of edges between two vertices pretty basic again so in the following example a b d e represents a path from a to e so where is a a is over here where is e e is over here so path basically would be sequence of edges so a to b b to d and d to e so this is one path right so there is one more path which you can take to e right which is a c f e correct which would be from a to c c to f and f to e correct so there can be multiple paths between two particular vertices between two particular nodes and path as i mentioned is nothing but a sequence of edges makes sense pretty basic let's move forward the next thing is self loop so an edge that connects a vertex to itself is basically a self loop so in our scenario we currently don't have a self loop but basically a self loop would look something like an edge that is connecting itself that is connecting one vertex to itself basically so b is getting connected by this edge to itself right so that is called a self loop so basically in a simple graph we don't have 
any self loops and i'll talk about what is simple graph in a second but i hope you understand what is a self loop self loop is nothing but a edge which is connecting a node or a vertex to itself so again this could also be a self loop make sense now you may be wondering where exactly self loop comes into picture in some scenarios it's possible or in some real world cases it's possible that one particular location has a path to itself and self loop scenarios happen okay we may talk about them in future videos but right now let's focus on simple graph so moving forward we have multi edge so two or more edges that are connecting the same two vertices is called multi edge so again in our case we don't have such edges which are connecting to the same vertices but in case if there were multi edge into our graph it would look something like let me add those this okay so you understand that there are two paths from d to b now again if you are wondering how can there be two paths between two particular nodes well let's take a real world example a real world example can be two cities which are interconnected by two roads let's say you are traveling from mumbai to pune so in that scenario you have two particular highways we have the newer highway and we have the old highway right so you can have two different paths to a particular city another example can be air travel so in air travel also between two cities we have multiple airports and multiple travel routes also correct so that is also possible so this is a undirected graph in a directed graph it can also have multi edges which are directed in nature which have both one single direction or you can also have more than two paths right so you can have three paths you can have four paths you can have n number of paths between two particular vertices so that is multi edge okay now these two things basically make a graph as a complicated graph so when you don't have self loop and multi edge a graph without loops or parallel edges it is also called parallel edges is called simple graph okay so that is what is a simple graph and we are mostly going to be dealing with simple graph only in our future examples as well as implementations also but basically a simple graph is nothing but a graph which does not have self loop or it does not have multi edge all right let's move forward so the degree of a node is the number of edges incident or attached on it so the number of edges which are coming to a particular vertex or going from a particular vertex is basically the degree so in a undirected graph it is bidirectional right so let's talk about d how many edges are there connected to d directly we have one and we have two so the degree of this particular node is going to be two all right similarly degree of b is going to be 1 2 3 and 4 right so that's how you calculate the degree if you are wondering where exactly degree is being calculated right now you don't need to worry about it in certain algorithms and calculations you require to figure out which is the vertex which is connected to the most number of you know other vertices and that's how you can calculate degree and all but right now you don't need to worry about that just understand what is degree of node and let's move forward so point number 7 i have actually repeated it over and over again so we already talked about what is a path let's talk about what is a simple path so a simple path is if no vertices and thus edges are repeated so if you take this path from a to e so if you go from a to b b to d and d to e did any vertices get repeated no did any edge get repeated no right so this was the first edge second edge third edge so that's a simple path let's say the path is a b d b and a so basically what we did is we are starting from a we are going to b right a to b then we are going from b to d then we are going from b to e let's let's make this e b and a right so from d we went to e then we have to go to b again so we followed this path so so far the edges are not repeated but you can see we've repeated the vertices and then we've also repeated one edge because we're now going back from b to a so we are going back from where we started so this is not a simple path okay this is where edges and vertices are repeated and then coming to the last point which is cycle a cycle can be defined as a path which has no repeated edges or vertices except the first and last vertices all right 
सो वॉट कुड बी अ साइकिल सो साइकिल कुड बी ए बी सी ए राइट यू गो फ्रॉम ए टू बी यू गो फ्रॉम बी टू सी यू गो फ्रॉम सी टू ए सो दैट एजेस आर नॉट रिपीटेड राइट वी डिड नॉट ट्रेवर्स ए टू बी मोर देन वंस सो वी ट्रेवर्स दिस वंस वी ट्रेवर्ड बी टू सी वंस वी ट्रेवर्स सी टू ए वंस सो ईच ऑफ द एज वॉज ट्रेवर्स ओनली वंस ओनली द फर्स्ट एंड द लास्ट वर्टाइज वॉज रिपीटेड राइट एक्सेप्ट द फर्स्ट एंड लास्ट वर्टाइज आर रिपीटेड सो वॉट कुड बी अनदर साइकिल एग्जाम्पल वी कैन हैव सी बी ई एफ सी राइट सो सी बी ई एफ एंड अगेन सी सो सी टू बी बी टू ई ए टू एफ एंड एफ टू सी अगेन राइट सो दिस इज हाउ यू हैव अ साइकिल सो जनरली ग्राफ्स ऑलवेज हैव साइकिल्स अ ग्राफ विच डज नॉट हैव अ साइकिल इज अ एक्सेप्शनल केस विच कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ ट्री राइट a tree is basically nothing but a graph without a cycle that's what we discussed previously also but yeah these are some important graph terms and properties and let's move forward now so lastly i wanted to talk about a little bit of calculation wherein we calculate the total number of edges in a graph so for a directed graph if the total number of vertices which which we assume as v is equal to n then the number of edges can go from 0 to n into n minus 1 so this is for a directed graph because in directed graph we have either two edges or a single edge right this is how directed graph would look like and this is applicable for a simple graph which means that we don't have three edges we can't have more than two edges all right so that's why this formula holds true so let's assume that we have three nodes a b c okay so if v is equal to n which is equal to 3 Right over here, n is equal to three. So the formula n into n minus one would be three into three minus one, which is going to be three into two, which is going to be equal to six. So you can see the total number of edges is going to be six. So this is the maximum number of edges. It can be either between zero to six. Okay, it won't be zero because there would be definitely some connections, but that is the range that is given over here. So this is just a mathematical representation. Now, of course, for Undirected graph, we will only have one edge, right? So one edge between two particular nodes. So there is no arrows involved. So in that case, it would be n into n minus one divided by two. So again, we have three vertices. So three into three minus one divided by two, which is ultimately going to be three into two divided by two. So the answer is going to be three. So three is the number of maximum number of edges that can be available in a undirected graph. when the number of vertices is 3 all right so this is again as i mentioned applicable for a simple graph which has no multi edges or self loop so do keep a note of this formula in case if you have to calculate right you will be given the number of vertices and they will tell you you know that it is a directed graph or a undirected graph and you have to calculate maximum number of edges so this is the formula okay so this was some more graph terminology some more graph properties some formula as well as some more theory on graph data structure if you've made any notes you can use these notes in your exams also but do keep those terminologies in mind like adjacency self loop multi edge directed undirected path number of edges etc etc these terms and properties will be used as we move ahead in graph data structure videos and as we get into the implementation also so it's going to be expected that you know all these basics okay so i'm going to wrap up this video over here i hope this was easy to understand we're still into the theory but now slowly we'll move into the implementation as well so if you're new on this channel and if you've understood if you like this video please give this video a like let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends and i'll see you guys in the next one peace